Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we're going to be talking about the dual detent system found on the Oz Machine Company Roosevelt or this here custom version of the Kvist Bladeworks variant. I think those are the only two knives that use this kind of system. In particular we're going to be talking about how those two detent balls impact the detent strength and I think we're going to be debunking a pretty common misconception about how this works. If you're not familiar with all what I'm talking about, I'm telling you how there's two different detent balls on this lock bar instead of the standard one those correspond to two different detent holes on this blade. And an important thing to remember, some important context for all of this, is that this second detent ball is pressed into a deeper depth than that one. It's very subtle, but it's two thousandths of an inch further down in. The reason for that is so that you don't have both detent balls riding across this path. Let's see if I can show that right now by just quickly assembling this a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but if we look at this, do you see here, and I pop this out, do you see how that second detent ball is not touching? We're only touching the first one and there's a little gap next to the second one. It's very close to the blade, but it's not actually touching. If we, if we look here, there is a point in the travel where finally we pop off that first detent ball, that one right there. It's under the blade and now, now it's not anymore. And it's only this very last bit of travel where we're now making contact with that second detent ball because this one's no longer pushing the, the lock bar down far, strong enough to, to push that out of the way. And so it's this tiny little last bit at the end where we're actually touching that second detent ball. And you can see that evidenced by the fact that there is a path right here for the inner detent ball and that outer path just doesn't exist at all until we get to that very, very edge. Okay, so now back to what this does for detent strength. Something I've heard said many, many, many times about the Roosevelt is that that second detent ball ought to be doubling the detent strength. And in fact, if you go back and listen to a year ago, one of the videos that Jacob posted when talking about why he's designing the variant the way he was, that's what he said was the reason for adding this here. He said he wanted to make sure that he had a very crisp, strong detent, and so he was going to add in um, a, a second detent ball to increase that strength. And I'm pretty confident that's not actually how this works. And the reason is because both of these detent balls are attached to the same lock bar. And what that means is that lock bar only has a certain amount of force. And so any amount of pressure that is placed on one detent ball that, that suppresses and offsets the positioning of the lock bar is going to have the exact same impact, positioning impact, on the other detent ball as well. The end result is that you kind of just end up splitting the difference between the two. So an analogy here to kind of explain what I'm talking about. You know these, these exercise bands, they've got a handle on them and there's some kind of band here. This one says it takes 10 pounds of force and that means that if you pull on this handle, it takes 10 pounds of pressure on this handle to stretch this bar. And if you want to increase your exercise, you can add a second band and that will double it to 20. But if you if you do the same thing over here, that would mean adding a second lock bar, so a second leaf spring that's applying the same amount of force as the original. If you add a second detent ball to the same lock bar, it's basically the same thing as adding a second handle to a single band. You still only have 10 pounds of force in that band, you just have two ways of pulling on it. And instead of having 10 pounds of force on this handle and 10 pounds going from the band, if you have a second handle on this, you basically just split it between the two and you have five pounds of force per each. The same thing happens over here. Um, the, the only difference is the fact that you can kind of change where the, the blade is interfacing on that ball. So if you had just a single ball, you, where you land on this ball is going to impact how strong that upward pressure is able to make the detent based on what component force of your pressure on the ball is going to push it in this direction versus pushing in that direction. And so as I've said in other videos, the higher up you on this you are, the more of your component force is going to be going down, aka pushing the blade out of the way. So the higher up your contact point is, the weaker the detent is going to feel. The lower down your pressure is, the stronger detent is going to be feel because a smaller component of your force is going to be pushing that blade down. Most of it's going to be pushing right up against the edge of it. So, if normally all of this is determined by a single detent, a single detent ball, and you double it, and now half of that force is a, is measured by each. If you change how the orientation is in one versus the other, you can make it so that while previously all of it was here, half of it now might be stronger or weaker than it was before. The reality is, is you can only control that really by moving these up or down or changing the positioning. And 
at the end of the day, because both of these have the second one lower down, well, you can only really make the detent weaker. And I'm going to go a little bit further and say that on this particular knife, at least, this second detent ball is not actually impacting the detent strength whatsoever. And the reason is because, as far as I can tell, these holes are positioned directly above these balls, and they are the exact same size as each other. It's it's hard for me to know that for sure, but I looked under this under my microscope, and yeah, I actually have a microscope for this stuff now. And as far as I can see, looking at this at like 60 times magnification as I very slowly move it, this appears to be exactly centered above, and it appears as if it's never actually making contact. To talk about what I'm talking about, or explain what I'm talking about better, I drew a little diagram here. So this is like our setup. We have here is the same circle size, reckoning our detent ball, but one slightly pressed in from the other. I literally just traced this. Now, this is a bit janky here, but I've tried my best to make these two holes the same size like I found on this this variant, and I've tried my best to have them centered above these holes. Now, obviously, I didn't do it perfectly, but I tried my best. What you'll see is that because they are the same size and because they're centered, it's going to make contact with this one, but be hovering above this one ever so slightly. And as we move the blade to the side, and in real life, the blade stays parallel here and the balls are what move up and down, but it's really hard for me to move all these pieces at the same time, so I'm just going to move the blade up. But what's happening is as the blade travels up this detent ball, you can see that it ends up just hovering over the other ball and it never actually makes contact. It wasn't making contact to begin with, and it never does. We're talking about this part right here. Now you could arrange this differently and change the position of this ball, this hole, so either you move it over or you make it smaller so that it is making contact here. And we're going to look at that right now with a second little janky sheet. So I've done my best to draw this with a smaller hole that would now be making contact. And so this is what I was talking about earlier. It's making contact lower down on this ball than it is on this one, which means down here we're further down, so a, a larger component of our force is going to be pushing in this direction instead of that direction pushing the ball out of the way, which means this one is going to have the same kind of strength, strong detent. This one is contacting higher up on the ball, and that means that the component force of your force pushing on the blade is going to be more directed downward. This ball, half is going to be split between the two of them, and this one is going to be more inclined to be pushed down than before. And so this particular setup is actually making the detent weaker. The second ball is pushing the is more oriented towards pushing the ball out of the way, which means it's going to feel like a weaker detent. But a really, really important thing to recognize is that that only matters for a very brief period of time. And the reason is because it has to travel up this ball as well. And this one is at a higher slope, which means the, the curve of this ball is angled more upward than this one. So if we travel up the side of it, you can see what happens. Right about there, we're no longer making contact with this ball. And again, it's because this one is angled more upward than it is over here. This one is a, uh, a, a shallower slope. And so as we go up this pretty darn quickly, we stop making contact with that second ball until eventually we are not making contact with it at all. And so the end of the day, even if you do arrange your second hole so that it is making contact, technically it's going to make it weaker and it's only going to make it weaker for a very brief portion of time. So it's really a pretty darn small impact. Now, this is my best understanding of how this works by just thinking about it, looking it up, and looking at it, and modeling it out. If you think I'm wrong about how this works, or if you think there's something I'm missing, or a different way to interpret this better, please let me know in the comments. I also wanted to point out that in my Roosevelt video, I had this kind of backwards. There's a section in the video where I have a diagram kind of similar to this, and I was talking about uh, motion. I was trying to explain why I thought, like I felt like I was hitting a little bit of a wall as I was starting to open it up. And I, I, I hypothesized that I was sliding off of one ball and coming to the other, but I had it backwards in what direction the motion was. And so in that video, I was talking about motion in this direction, but the way that these actually work, the blade is moving that way, and so it's running up this side. So I definitely had it backwards in that video. Anyway, again, just my best understanding. Please let me know if you think something else. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.